25% show tunes, 25% hip hop, 25% classic rock, 100% gay. We're going to be watching season two, episode eight of Euphoria, the finale of Euphoria season two. We're already confirmed for season three, so that's really great. We're gonna come back again in three years to do season three. You know, we got we waited two years for this season two, so we're gonna wait three years, three years for season three. That's what we're gonna do now. Without further ado, there's no need for introduction. Let's just get started. I'm going to say this at the very beginning of my commentary. He's going to die. Or he's not going to die. No, I'm switching up. He's not going to die, but something bad is going to happen to him. Dude, I knew it fucking Faye. Yes, I knew fucking Faye was going to pull through for us. I know she was going to be better. I knew that him sharing his sandwich in, the, in that first episode was going to come back around. We got to figure out what the fuck we're going to say. Okay? Uh-oh. This is Wait, becoming Ash. a fucking issue. Wait, Ash, Ash, no! Why is he so okay with committing murder? Why is he so okay with committing murder? Ashtray is actually a wild card, and now I'm scared of him. I knew Custer was probably gonna die just because like, he had to. Why did Ashtray do that so quick? Do you ever think about the future? Yeah, all the time. Really? Is them talking about the their futures meant to symbolize or meant to foreshadow that he's not gonna have a future and they're not gonna have a future together because he's gonna die? <laughs> I'm on to you before you even fucking know it. Before you even know it, I'm on to you. Oh God. The demon's coming out. Do I look good, but I- Oh, 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 don't do that. Uh-oh. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, what is she doing? Is she gonna beat up herself in the play? Enough predicting, let's just watch. I'm like scared, like, I want to just predict what's going to happen because I feel like anything I predict is going to be better than what actually comes out. Like anything that she's going to do right now is going to really be the point of no return. Every single step she takes is a point of no return. It's very devastating to see Cassie season one turn into this. It's very sad. She's up here unpacking all of her trauma. I have <laughs> no... If I was up there, I pinch you. I pinch your armpit and make you shut the fuck up. I just think it's funny that she she is not speaking loud enough for people in the back row to hear. So the people in the back row are hearing. I have no idea how hard your life That's what they're hearing. They cannot hear anything she's saying. I don't want to play it. Luna. Is this part of the play? No. If you I'm beat serious? up my Lexi. I will beat you up. I will beat you up if you beat her up. This is embarrassing though. This is very embarrassing because it feels like she thinks she's Santana. Oh, please. She has a family, she's a mother. Walk away and tighten up hey. your body before you get to God! She thinks she's Santana Lopez, like going on this rant, like dragging her to hell and all she's doing is embarrassing herself. This is your big moment. She's Shine. fucking nuts. Is she gonna hit her? Embarrass you. Oh, really? Then what is this? What act are we in? Don't question it. <laughs> what act are we in? Welcome to act three, where live action becomes live action. Live action becomes reality. And there's no turning back. There was no turning back from once we started the play. To be fair, I mean, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna just fully be on Lexi's side because if I didn't know my sister was putting on an entire play that also had me in it, first of all, I'd be super mad because I would wanna be a part of my character. Like I would be, want to be a part of contributing to the backstory and the internal workings of a character. Cause it's me, you know, like if it's my biopic, I wanna be a part of it. I would be mad about that, but I feel like Cassie only saw the things that were insults or humiliation. This kind of caricature of Cassie, she still was like, how can you be smart, intelligent, and have that body? Like she did say that. And she's also talking about in this play, not just, oh, here's Cassie and here's, we're trying to embarrass and humiliate her. It's here's Cassie and here's how her life has affected mine. And I feel like Cassie's not understanding that because her brain cells are lost. Like there's not a lot of um, 
comprehension in that brain anymore. Mom, I'm the one who takes risks. I'm scared. Oh my god, it's so sad. Imagine your older sister doing that to you. That's why you're able to stand up here and judge all of us! You're just a fucking bystander. Right, Mom, right, stop! All right. No, this is not okay. Look, I'm gonna cry. Because I can't imagine my older sister saying that to me. It's actually making me quite sad. Because I can't imagine someone that you look up to your entire life. Someone like your older sister who's like there for you, who protects you, who shows you how to do so many things in life. And like, I can't imagine that person saying something like that to me. That would actually be so sad. And it's making me tear up because this little look on Lexi's face is making me so sad. Fuck. Fuck you, Cassie. Fuck you. Boo. Do tomato, 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 tomato. Throw the bucket of tomatoes. Okay. They're at the. They're under your seats. Well, that makes me a villain. She's having a Joker moment. She's having a very much of a Joker moment in a very uncanny way. Like it's actually a little too close to the Joker moment. <laughs> okay. Well, that makes me a villain. Then so fucking be it. Well, let me get this straight. You think that killing those guys is funny? I do. And I'm tired of pretending it's not. God, yes! Oh, that's it! Oh my god, I just lost fucking everything! No! <laughs> I can't you. Get the fuck you did that to yourself, babes. You can't ride a carousel, a children's ride, and, and like that, and then not expect to be made fun of. Oh my god, and she's running away. She can't even run. <gasps> Oh my god, and there's so many of them, you can't tell who's who. <gasps> They're very slow. They're all very slow. I'm so sorry. Beat her, beat her, beat her. Get her hair. Yeah! Shove her into the brick wall. No. Sorry. Uh. No, we're not doing this right now. We can't. We just went from ass beating to this. I can't. Why? Can I tell you something? Sorry, I would be so upset. I I'd be so upset if someone said that to me. That's the first thing that comes out of his mouth. Can I play you something? Can I play you something? No, you can't. I don't want to hear you. Think you may be my it kind of reminds me of um, Nick Donas in Camp Rock specifically. I really like you when the moon looks like a toenail. In the end, I'm still working on it. Okay. You can't just put a little funky note at the end of the song and be like, I'm still working on it. Like, you played perfectly throughout the entire thing and then you were like, I'm still working on it. Like, it's finished, babes. Like, we know. It sounds perfect. It's not even over yet. <laughs> it should be dangerous. Oh my god. I need to find the TikTok because I was watching TikTok and title of the last episode was a, I think, a book that this guy wrote. It's this whole idea that about putting the audience into the, like, into the art and not having that protection over the audience incorporating the audience to fully feel the art that's being performed which is very interesting being as it actually brought the audience to risk it should be dangerous what play in east highland has started riot and i love that reference and i'm lucky i'm lucky that i saw that tiktok which i don't know if i liked it so if you guys know that tiktok leave it in the comment section down below because i want to give credit where credit is due Oh, they're best friends and that's lovely to see. I hope we get more of Bobby in the next season because she's actually so cute. <gasps> they're so cute. Oh my God. They're so cute. Oh, the whole cast is so cute. Just waiting for what she has to say. I'm sorry. Dude, how long is this play? Intermission was crazy, dude. I went to this high school play the other day and intermission was absolutely bonkers. No, Ash. you guys, you guys both need to put, Not gonna let nothing. you guys both need to put the gun down because if either of you have a gun while the police come in, they are going to shoot you. 
What the fuck is this bit? Oh my god, how dare you cut between that suspenseful ass scene and then cut to Nate Jacobs speeding. Probably gonna get in a car crash, stupid motherfucker. He's gonna car crash and he's gonna run into his dad again. And his dad's gonna be like, you fucking crash into my car? What is that? You're scaring me. I thought he was gonna shoot his own dick. It's everything. 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 Nick, look at me. Do not do this. This is satisfying because you know all the stuff he was saying to Nate was just like a load of bullshit. Because if you really meant that, you would have said that earlier before you had this weird awakening after you like got blackout drunk and went to your favorite gay bar. You know what I mean? Why is Ash doing this? You can't take them. They all have bulletproof. They all have bulletproof vests. I'm sorry. Stop. Oh, no, no, no. Oh my god, this is so, like not okay. This is very much not okay. Answer me! No. Oh my god. Guys, <laughs> what the fuck? I just. I just don't. Did he. Th I'm really trying to get into the mind of Ashtray right now. I'm really trying to get into the mind of Ashtray to see why he did that. Shoot me. Because I know why he was kind of like going into the bathroom. He kind of thought that he could like save them or something. And I don't know if it was a full suicide mission. Like, let me take out some cops while I like die or if it was like i believe that i can defeat the whole police force right now i don't know which one it was and i don't know what the fake out thing was either did he think he got all the police did he think he killed all the police officers when he was in the bathroom and that's why he did the fake out and then tried to kill the last one that's what he thought because i'm really trying to understand how he thought he annihilated every police officer. I understand it, like I know what happened, but I'm trying to get inside the mind of a character. And to be fair, I don't know. This is the, this is the scene that scars her forever. I'm, I'm wondering if this is like what's being portrayed on the play, if it's actually word for word what Rue says, or if we're only getting word for word what Rue says because we're in the position of Rue as an audience member. Oh, and then it's gonna cut to her. Oh my God, and she's gonna experience the same ass fucking thing when she visits Fez in the hospital. I miss you until I close my eyes. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, such a brilliant scene. Such a brilliant scene. So well done. Love it that it's in the play. Um, and I love it that Lexi wrote it in because it resonated so much. Like, like we saw in the last episode, Rue's dad dying and Lexi's dad leaving happened sort of similarly before they went into high school. And seeing that this addition to the play is so vital because it uh, resonated and uh, changed Lexi's perspective on everything so much. I love that tie-in. I love how uh, purposeful it is and I love how it has so much impact on the story and characters. I love it that it's so in character for them to do, for Lexi to do. And I f fucking love that final shot of Rue closing her eyes. Magnificent, top tier, fucking amazing, fucking amazing. Yeah, just laying in bed. <laughs> cool, well, um, can I maybe like come over? Fuck you, fuck you, because I feel like we're gonna get 
have to say over the season, this has been one of my favorite arcs ever. And I think why people like Lexi and Rue's friendship and uh, why no one has really ever criticized it that much and in, in terms of Rue being a bad friend and Lexi's undying loyalty her to her, I believe that it kind of is because it's probably one of the most universal experiences portrayed in the show. It's simple yet not. And why I say that is because it's the simplicity of just growing up and growing out of relationships and drifting off, which is so common. Everybody is experienced. Everyone will experience it because it's one of the most common things that everybody is going to experience. And it also is attached to both sides of what each of them were going through. And I love it that it's finally coming to this full circle that it's really satisfying to see and that it, it wasn't just one person being like, I acted a certain way I drifted away, I'm sorry. It's both of them having to grow up in their own certain ways apart to be able to kind of come back together and have that friendship. I can't watch these serious parts of Euphoria with my boobies out. So I'm putting this on. All right, everyone come back together like that, beautiful. Mom, no one wants to remember oh, this moment. Oh, little sugar sweetheart. Stop. So sorry. That's so cute. And also a wonderful, like, wonderful play, might I add. The the switching back and forth between the funeral to how they were growing and what was happening and how it ties up to that. <laughs> Brilliant writing, I'm on that. That's crazy. That's cute, by the way, that photo. That's so freaking cute. But you've been through a lot and you know what to do with it. I don't know about that. Yeah, like, look what you made. I don't know how to do that. I have a lot to say about the scene. First off, I think I think Rue confiding in Lexi being like, I don't know how to get to that point. I don't know what to do with what I've been through and you turned it into something like this so wonderful and I don't know how to do that. I think I like that line because it kind of showcases this weird obsession society has with turning trauma into art and if you don't turn trauma into something good, if you don't turn the dark stuff that has happened to you into this gorgeous masterpiece that resonates with people, then you're somehow living life incorrectly and dealing with what happened to you incorrectly. So I love it in this scene where Rue says that, you know, you know, I think I've been through a lot and she finally says it to really realize that she has been through a lot. And in the beginning of the season, we saw her say to Elliot that I, I didn't start doing drugs because my dad died, which was, you know, true in a sense, you know, it's true, but it also, her dad dying contributed to these so many feelings that she didn't know how to process. And not being able to process traumatic things leads you to do other things. There's reasons for everything. And that that's what I've talked about during all these episodes is that Euphoria is this classic example of cause and effect. And each character has their cause and effect. But I think what Rue is missing is that Lexi made this play she made this play not just because she had this i'm turning my life into and what happened to me into something brilliant and amazing and this is how i'm gonna process all of it she's processing a lot of it because of the people around her and because of rue a, a lot of the writing in the play has to do with rue and things that she has said and uh her dad passing and both of their dads passing in this growing up and growing apart sort of narrative um so i think once we realizes that that might be a game changer i don't know because i know that he loves you a lot more than he loves himself i don't know if that made you feel better <laughs> <laughs> I just love this dynamic between Lexi and Rue. And I explained it earlier and I've already had this whole Rue and Lexi like gooing session, but I just love this exchange they had of ways that they could really be there for each other once they grew up a bit. And I think that's a very um, important thing to learn in life is that sometimes we can't be there for people in the moment. Sometimes we do have to grow up a bit and we have to have a different perspective on life to be that comfort for some people. And even Lexi said in 
the beginning of the play when she's seeing Rue take these drugs at her own dad's funeral, she's saying, I knew drugs could be a greater comfort to her than I ever could. And I think it's so important to realize that they did become that comfort for each other. It just took a lot of time and a lot of growing up to do. Don't worry. This is just the beginning. I don't want it to be the beginning. I don't I don't want this to just be the beginning. I want this to end now. She's like immediately please. Can it please end? Is it too late to say take back sees? Is it too late to say I take it all back? Oh. A kiss is worth a thousand words, babes. I don't even think that's what the saying is, but a kiss is worth a thousand words at that point. I can't imagine how relieving that must have felt. I remember Ali said, the thought of maybe being- But she doesn't person. know that Fez is in me trying to be a jail. Person. But she doesn't know anything about Fez. Hey Lord, you Yo, know what the fuck? <laughs> Oh my god. We'll listen to that fucking song later. We have things to discuss and things to conclude. So I'm gonna do a really quick wrap up right now. I'm not gonna go on tangents. I'm not gonna go into every little thing that happened. I'm just gonna conclude this entire video and then I will do another video if you guys want me to do like a full season wrap up because I totally will do that. The whole thing with Cassie and Maddie, I do think it is this sort of drawn out thing through euphoria and if you love it you love it if you don't it's entertaining it's fun it's dramatic it's reality tv show-esque type drama which i know everyone loves the only thing i want to say on that did we need every single episode to be the showdown between them no but i digress it is what it is. The biggest shame about this show and how it's portrayed and certain plot lines that they take is that they they have a hard time differentiating through the actual storyline and that deeper message that they want to convey versus this shock value, graphic, loud, um, reality TV show-esque drama that they place on top. And I think that's sort of a flaw. I I, I think it's great because it gets so many people watching it, but then I think a lot of people watch it and then they go into watching it, wanting it for the shock value dramatic stuff. And then when it happens to be a slow scene with Rue or this like a uh, more simple scene that's not shocking, but it has a lot of meaning and it can be very beautiful if you watch it. They have so much criticism over it and I think that's really a shame. And I think that is not just a fault on the viewer, I think it can also be a fault on the writer. I didn't think Fez was going to die just because he's such a prominent character and he's become such a fan favorite that they wouldn't kill him so quickly. I do think he will eventually die. Um, since that was the plan for season one and that was teased throughout season two, I think it's eventually going to be his fate and it's going to set up a lot of characters for this like big shift in their lives. If they want to drag it out and he dies at the end of season three and they have a season four or whatever, you know, they might just cap it off at three seasons. Please leave your comments on this episode, this finale of Euphoria. Did you like it more than last season? Did you like it less? Let me know all of that and let me know your thoughts on literally everything. I read all your comments. So literally let me know and start a fight with me. Okay, I'll see you guys later. Bye.